Hi, I'm Steve Mathis. Welcome to the Pulp MX Classic Commentary. And I'm here with... David Pingree. David Pingree, thank you. The race we've chosen, 99 Minneapolis Supercross. Uh, probably a, a fond, memory, fond memory for you. A fond memory? Fond memory. Uh, it was a good, me- a good memory. I uh, actually had a, a lot of expectations coming into this season because uh-huh. uh, my bikes were awesome. Yeah. Everything was just going really well. And then literally the week before Anaheim, I had a just something went out in my back. Mm-hmm. And I kind of compressed a disc or something. And I could, I could barely walk before the Anaheim opener. So oh, really? I ended up being you know way behind the eight ball. When you started. Points. Yeah, yeah, and it took me um, you know, a long time to get so going. Here we go, 250 Heat 1. McGrath on top of the world at this point, 1999. Uh, the man. And uh, got the hoop earrings and the goatee and the burns. <laughs> Look at that pointy <laughs> facial hair. <laughs> I was working for Ty Bur- or, I was working for Timmy Ferry this year, Nolene Yamaha. And we had a good year. Um, top privateer. And going into this race, top privateer. And I remember by the time we hit Minneapolis here, he was making the mains out of the heats. Almost regularly, and, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, it, you know, Timmy so, was. Know, yeah, Timmy yeah. was, which is good. Uh, and back then, it was only top four. Top four. Yeah. This is tough. And there's Lammy. He had a rough year. Uh, uh, I went to. We moved to Chaparral later on this year, so I was kind of privy to some stuff that was going on. And as RL. <laughs> yeah. They were quite a team back then. Um, and Tortelli, first year of Supercross, just plowing the tops of the jumps down. No. <laughs> yeah. Whoever had to work on the bottoms of his frames, that was a rough job. Yeah. Polishing yeah. out those dents. But as we sit here in Troy Lee's actual palatial office, there's Tim Ferry there. 250cc Heat 2 is on the line. There's Ferry, number 20. The gate drops, and they're off. And uh, Robbie Raynard, look at that. Yeah. Wait do you see what happens later on. Here. Oh, he's going to cartwheel, isn't he, and do a shoulder. No, you'll be surprised. Oh. Uh, that's what I mean. He takes off. Oh. And he had those rides. See, every just now about and then, every right? other race, yeah. you could say, "Oh, he goes down and does a shoulder," and that would have been accurate. And uh, there's Timmy. He's down, and this wasn't. I swear, the race look at the smoke the coming out of there. <laughs> it's my jetting. Who's your mechanic? <laughs> hey, what do you remember about this race, this track? To me, it looks cool. You know what? I actually remember that it was a really good track um, back then. Like you know, you, you and I talked about earlier, is you couldn't do everything the same. I don't know. They just made it to where there was technical sections mm-hmm. and different lines like that. And there was stuff the 250 guys could do that just the 125s could not do. Yeah. You just couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, where now it seems like rarely is there an obstacle the 450 guys do that 250 F guys aren't doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I thought this was kind of cool. It was like a little tabletop thing that kind of was used once on the start and then again, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It seemed like it could be the bikes, could be the times, but to me the tracks back, in, back then were cooler. But I don't know. Well, that's a sign of getting old is everything yeah. was cooler back then. Right. But I'll tell you, uh, you might be right because I, I feel like the Dirt Works guys definitely don't get as creative as they used to. They don't um, – mm-hmm. uh, it's almost like they've gotten a little – Look at that MC going off of that. That's big. That was big. That was big. Uh, and, and, and So you were saying the Dirt Works guys – Well, you the, know, the it's like – you know what it seems yeah. like? And I don't know. I don't know what they got. It seems right. like they've signed a contract. They're all set. Yeah, it's a multi-year deal, and they're just like, bring eh, it in. Throw some jumps over there. <laughs> hey, maybe whoops here. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Like a finish reverse, line double, reverse dragon back, triple yeah. lo- triple finish, uh, triple jumps for finish line. Um, look at that old uh, air scoreboard cam. Do we have those anymore? I don't think so. I kind of like it. it. Makes me dizzy a little bit, but it makes me scared. See, but, that uh, triple right there into that turn, mm-hmm. you couldn't do that on 125. Right. Just not happening. Yeah, and, and that's just it. Look at that. And MC doesn't, yeah. And that, whatever quad that was, was ridiculous, right. too. He was the man back then. Huh? I remember first lap in the race, or in, the heat, in practice for the day, the whoops would be just huge. Everyone was stressing, and that guy would come out and just very first lap, burr, 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 and you would just be like, oh, man. Like, I don't know if he did it on purpose, because he knew that everyone was stressing about the size of the whoops, but... He was pretty unbeatable back then. Yeah, he definitely uh, definitely had everybody covered. Yeah, here's a flashback here. Uh, Art and uh, Bailey are telling us. Uh, what do we got there? Uh, 1994. So we got Craig and Chicken. <laughs> the two oh. nuttiest guys <laughs> in the whole series. Right there. There's 8 million stories going around the track right there. And a bunch of warrants. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of illegal drugs used <laughs> between the two of them <laughs> but uh yeah look at uh look at Ed Kurdowski who says he can't ride supercross but as with usual with these uh, oh that was half-assed 
<laughs> Come on, Jeremy. But, are but you people serious? would lose their minds for that. I know. Yeah. Well, that would just look really half-hearted right. to me. Uh, yeah, so like, getting back to what I was saying, 99, uh, Jeremy's on Chaparral. And Renard sticking it to him, like staying in there, you know. Uh, you know, he's not letting him run away too far. And it's funny because a few other races I have of this season, Renard's right there. He even wins a heat straight up. Not mm. Jeremy against Jeremy, but against Yogi, you know. Oh, so. Renard was like the next big thing. I mean, he yeah. was as talented as they came back in the day. He just had lots of injuries. and right. A little before your time, right? Like, no, he yeah, was younger than I was. He was? Yeah, I grew oh, up geez. racing with Damon Huffman and Craig Decker and Mike Metzger. Uh -huh. And Robbie was about a year younger. And he finally got into our... I guess it would be 125B class back then. Right. And, you know, I, I used to beat Robbie on occasion. Really? Yeah. Uh, Even at Supercross during these years, I'd beat him. Here's oh, a, when he was riding 125. Here comes a guy that was probably the only guy to touch Jeremy, and that was uh, Yogi. Mm. And, uh, you know, Yogi told me in a podcast we did that, you know, he took MC out a couple times. That was a sick pass right there. That, that See, was. that's why. That was, yeah. And uh, Yogi could straight up beat Jeremy every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if he could keep it on two wheels, mm -hmm. Jeremy had nothing for him, and I think he was more fit than Jeremy was. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jeremy. MC's modus operandi was 10 laps, huh, back back here? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe eight. Well, you know, I mean, he, he would have a 15-second lead after right. six to eight laps. Yeah. He would just check out and be gone yeah. and then leave everyone else to just ride around because once they can't see you, it's really hard to pull you back in, you know. And he had the whole intimidation thing, too. He's the king. Like, I can't catch him, I can't beat him, right? Yeah. And uh, I just, if Yogi had a good start, kept it on two wheels, you know, yeah, Jeremy couldn't drop him, couldn't couldn't beat him, couldn't go that, that same pace for 20 laps, and Yogi could. Yeah. It's another thing, too, when you watch this. Even MC, he'll make a mistake in a corner, and he won't jump a section because he, he didn't get traction, made a mistake. You just don't see that now. Mm -hmm. Guys, I mean, they could stop at the face of the yeah. jump. Yeah. So you really had to ride the bike. You had to, you know. Look at Goose. How many, not as many championships, but a little more hair. Yeah. Is that sort of a, is that how it works? Less hair, more titles? I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, him and Yogi were really tight. That's for sure. Look at this. See, bringing them in. Staying on two wheels, the key, like Ping says. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember what happens in this race, but right. my guess is if, if he's closing in on Jeremy and he doesn't win this, he's probably oh. cartwheels it somewhere. He doesn't. Uh, he's not able to do that section. And he loses some time. Dude, that's big right there because you are got no lip or nothing. You're just riding off that. <laughs> this was kind of the end to me of when Honda was like it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That team was right. so gnarly. You heard just you heard those bikes and you're like, oh, man. Right, right. Um, Yogi, Tortelli, Pichon, Wyndham. Yeah, just kind of after. I don't know. I you tell Wyndham. me. What do you yeah. think? Because after this, it was like Jeremy went on this streak with, with Yamaha. And yeah. I don't know. Since then, there's just never been a – obviously, Ricky, when he came back there. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was, he was a couple years away from, from – he really liked this camera right in that section. Mm. He cut through it every lap. But, uh, I mean, Yogi's got to be feeling good after this ride. I mean, he's, he got pretty close to MC right here. So, makes you wonder why he can't go across that corner right there. Duke Finch, though, his old riders meeting thing. If, if I can put a pole up and you cross that pole, you're cheating. You remember, don't remember I that? do remember yeah, that. Yeah. The old Duke. <laughs> the Duke. <laughs> oh, and there it is. Oh. One-footed whipper. <clears throat> was that a main event? No. Oh, that was just the <laughs> heat. heat race. Uh, and Robbie Renard getting third. And I think Tortelli getting fourth, no doubt. Uh, uh, a strong fourth. <laughs> Elbows up, casing everything along the way. <laughs> but, oh, look at that. Man, he was cool. And uh, also, too. Uh, I suppose that was it. Yeah, that was it. He was going to... Uh, do well, I mean when we this year or later on the nationals, he was on 125s. Yes, yes, he still on 125s. Uh, Timmy and I stayed with him for two weeks, and in the middle of summer in Florida, he would run. He ran three 40s on a sand track mm -hmm. on a Cowie 125, and uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was so hot. Yeah, but he he like, he always rode motos a lot. He just didn't yeah. do. I think that year he started being smarter about it, doing mm -hmm. other things to supplement it. Because uh, uh, yeah. in 97, when I stayed with him, he ate cheeseburgers. Right. We'd get up and eat 
Eggo waffles. Well, with, I can't believe it's not butter spray. And <laughs> he'd tell his mom we were going to the gym. We'd go down to Sonny's Pit Barbecue and just yeah. mow down food. Uh, well, when we stayed with him, he would cook up Jimmy Dean sausages every morning mm. for breakfast. The little their yay big sausages. But uh, yeah, look at Robbie Renard. He's doing that again, apparently. I don't know if you've seen him lately, but he's got the Ego slash Jimmy Dean plan going again. I didn't say that. Hey, David, David Pingree said how, that. How uh, long has War- Big Bird – he was getting seconds back in his no lean days. Yeah, he was, which when is 94, was 95. 94, 95, yeah. And this is 99, so four years later. Um, this was Robbie Renard's arm pump uh, of days, and he just told me in a recent podcast he suffered from – the opposite of diabetes, gly, glyso, glysoma, glycema, some Hy- sugar. Hypoglycemia yeah, or yeah, hyperglycemia? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, hyper. And hyperglycemia is too much sugar. Too much so. sugar, the opposite of diabetes. Mm. And he couldn't figure it out, and his arms were pumping up really. There's Kelly Smith, my former, my future rider at this point, uh, making a main on a KTM, which is pretty much like a if making you say a main. anything about Mount Morris, whatever no. year, I'm going to vomit right now. No. No. Uh, so he said his arms would pump up all the mm. time, and Robbie didn't know what was going on. But Maybe you should have laid off the Snickers. Um, I know there was a lot of shaking to the arms in the air, which mm. also, too, in vogue back in, I don't know if you remember this, arm pump surgery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember? Oh, yeah. I'll go in and take the sheath off of my arm. and <laughs> The fascia. Pull off was the fascia. Was that what it was? Is that what it was called? Yeah. Uh, how'd that work? Some guys said it worked good. I, other guys, you know, that the fascia closes back up. So mm-hmm. you'd ha- to really to have it be effective, you'd have to do it every, you know, year or two, couple of years. Uh huh. I don't know. Oh, Some so guys, they didn't, it, they didn't cut it out. They just no. They you just make an incision and the rock you know tear the fascia so the muscle right. can expand more. And they're laughing, Jason Fernet. Um, oh, you know what? I think this night, this year, Fernet and I went to a strip club in Minneapolis and we saw Duke Finch there. Oh jeez. Um, and and Fernet. Took home a stripper that was wearing leopard pants. I think it was 99. Anyways, uh, funny how I remember this jog, year. Jog your memory. This year, earlier in the year, I went to a club where Guy Cooper was there. Not a club. It was a, like a bar. Everyone mm-hmm. was there afterwards. You know, like a restaurant bar grill. <laughs> I'm making it sound seedier than it really yeah. was. But he, I don't even know if I should be talking about this, but he's like really proud that his girlfriend at the time. Uh-huh wife now probably uh i don't know had new boobs uh-huh. and he dude you gotta see these and he like pulled his wife's shirt up i'm like uh awkward uh, all yeah right. those are nice guy um, thank you uh larocco just got renard late in the race and uh yeah late in the race i don't like robbie renard's odds of staying ahead of mike larocco no, late either. in the 20 lap main event um what was jeremy's on cruise control here about now, 75%. When I, later on this year, we joined she, Team Chaparral. MC made two appearances. One at the Summer Cross. I don't need to go over that. No. Two was at Washugal when he like came straight. He, I think he choppered in from Havasu. But, and I, so I didn't really know him. But I'll tell you, I always thought he was the coolest dude. Always nice, still to this day. But Jeremy? Yeah. yeah. But now you're, you were buddies with him mm-hmm. at a height of his powers. Good dude, right? Totally good dude. Like, never, yeah. no egos, no nothing? No. No. No, good guy. Okay. For sure. I just wanted to confirm what I probably already knew, you know? No, you were right. He, yeah. He, um. No mistakes, Leroy told Big Bird. <laughs> Always a good thing to Rocket science, these <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> okay, Tons. I got to think of something really <laughs> profound and deep and motivating. What, what, hey. what can I say? Breathe. Hey, one time. No I, mistakes. Uh, one time uh, I put on the board for Ferry, P6, don't fall. And uh, I brought the board back, and it had it written still. And, oh, I got a lot of grief. I'm sure you did. Don't Sick. fall. Don't fall. <laughs> Dude, it was his best finish at that point all season, so I got really excited. Don't fall. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I always thought Jeremy was pretty cool and, and a nice guy, even when he was winning everything and, and he was the man, you know. No, he was a good guy for sure. Still is. Um no Tim Ferry in this main event. He got 12th. I remember that. And also, I was going to say earlier, when the weather got cold outside Minneapolis, Indianapolis, St. Louis, he turned into a whiny little baby. Yeah. And he just kept saying about how cold it was, how he couldn't handle it, how this place sucked. Typical Florida guy. Oh, so. brother. I don't know if it was this year or, or the year prior. And Pichon goes by. But Pichon, his old man got picked up on the 15 freeway here in Corona. <laughs> 
and he was over medicated on these uh, what? prescription something or another's for something, and he was like, you know, mentally altered. <laughs> I don't know what was going on, but he was like zigzagging along <laughs> along the side of the freeway, Come and he on. literally got picked up by the police. He did. He couldn't speak really? English. Yeah, I remember it was a big deal. Mitch was laughing about it. Oh man, he was mentally altered. Yeah, like. Um. <laughs> He, he didn't remember, know where he was. He could barely speak. By the end of this year, he wanted out of Honda, and it would happen at Mount Morris. But I specifically remember him absolutely giving up uh, at these races, at Supercrosses. Really? Timmy would catch him at the end. I'd be all pumped because it was Mikel Pichon, number five, and he was beating him. But he would literally just be riding around, standing up. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Did you ever go to a have a suit with, with Jeremy or yep. Fro on any of those yep. trips? Yeah, I went. Well, I mean – Let's not let's not be. I didn't hang with those guys, but I was yeah. there. What's the bar called? What's the Kokomo's? Kokomo. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then it went to uh, that was the <coughs> evening hangout spot, or you yeah. go, or you went to the. I never. What, what was it? You crossed the channel into that other part, and then you could, you know, yeah. smoke dope out there. And oh, I don't know what you're talking you. about. But yeah, and then uh, the sandbar during the day. <laughs> I remember yeah. one time. This was way back. Can I just say when I went, we never had a boat. And no oh. one was inviting us in. <laughs> but, that's, that's sad. But we were there to party at night. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I would Just go on the boat. The to the, we'd We're all not go even out talking about this racing. We're no, not even well, talking about What's to talk yeah, about? I know, I know. MC's okay. checked out. I'm telling right. you my grass story. Okay. They had this bottle, like a big bottle of Goldschlager. That was kind of, these guys would beer bongs, Coors Lights all day long. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally we'd do shots. Of Goldschlager, that was like uh, the hot drink. Ricky ruined everything with his training. <laughs> <laughs> this was the good old days of Jeremy and Fro. Right. So I had this cat. Was the they, they, they said, there? hey, was no, Larocco was never there. <laughs> it's kind of sad because Yogi and Larocco would be back in the east and the humidity just yeah. sweating, right. grinding out laps and, and they got running. A picture, like Rocky, they got a picture of MC on the <laughs> mirror. And then they would show up and he would work them. And MC's just... <laughs> Just trying to figure out how to open the back of his throat so we can put a beer down quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So back to the story, Goldschlager. So they said, dude, go get the Goldschlager. Let's, you know, shots, you know, whatever. So right. I pull this thing out. I lose the cap. And I, I already had a few adult beverages at this point. So I, I lose the cap. I, for some reason, just it was, like, not an option to set it down somewhere and yeah, just whatever. Yeah. I'm like, no, we got to finish it. Yeah, there's no cap. There's no we got to finish this. <laughs> so I walked around with my thumb over the top. God forbid water gets in there. <laughs> yeah. Handing it off to people, doing shots with this thing. And uh, anyway, I passed out and vomited on the way home. <laughs> that was the. Uh, <laughs> were you like the guy in, uh, in, in Hangover? You were on a wolf pack? All you guys were in a wolf pack. Um, uh, oh, look at LaRocco. Larry Ward. Combined races right there, 648. Um, uh, no, I went to there one time. Yeah, didn't have a boat. Hung out like on the beach, and then I was like, "Well, everybody goes to Kokomo's, so I'll go to Kokomo's because mm. I'm Birdwell's mechanic or whoever I was, you know." Well, the other thing was there was uh, there was always somebody famous there. Yeah. Jamie Fox was what, what there that year. Leroy, what is Leroy doing? He's oh, there's Factory Phil, yeah. the other Moto Triple X guy. <laughs> I believe he was Jamie at Havasu Fox? as well. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, there's probably a hundred percent chance of Phil at Havasu at this point. Uh, uh, yeah, so Jimmy Fox was there. He had this double-decker houseboat with a stripper pole on top. No, -uh. Yeah, he was. there was just a massive crowd around him. And there was just naked girls, yeah. debauchery, like whatever you could imagine. Right. Things you think even wouldn't imagine in public were hap happening. And these are people's daughters and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. terrible. Yeah. you got that's a couple true. daughters, right? I do now. Yeah. I'll never go to have Sue again. <laughs> no one's ever allowed to go to have Sue in my family. <laughs> Really? So Jamie Foxx, I didn't know he was even around back then, but that's a cool story. Yeah. Um, Before he was a rap star or whatever he is now. And, and this, uh, getting back to the races here, uh, the other rider that was on Pirelli's was Mike LaRocco, and we were so frustrated with tires, uh, Ferry was, that he would just tell me to go over to Mike and whatever they're running and see what he wants to run. So I would make my trip over <laughs> in the morning and be like, hey, what are you guys running today? And they would tell me, and I'd go back and we would mount that. And then a few times they showed up with a different tire and they had good laughs because, you know, I shouldn't have told them what I was doing. Yeah. You know, but so it would be like Ferry would be like, dude, you said he's got the 484 and he's got the 691. And I'm like, oh, sorry. They jacked with you. Yeah, they jacked with me. But uh, look at MC. No knack-knack. 
Too tired, probably. Yeah, there's Larry Ward and there's Fernet getting lapped. Iron Mike just getting warmed up. <laughs> Looking for a 30 lapper. Uh, Big Bird's ready to go. He's ready to, to hit 20, though. He was never a bastion of fitness back then. No. No. There's RL. Look at that. God, earrings. I want a yellow glasses, too, as a mechanic. Like, if you had yellow glasses and a headset, man. Yeah, you were pretty cool. Oh, dude, you were the bomb. Six consecutive Minneapolis win there. Yeah. And that was just, he had more years after that, so you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, he won, I think he won two more races there. He never, and I don't think he ever lost. You know what made it harder to do back then was to stop on a jump, take your hands off and wave, because oh, yeah. your bike would stall. Right, right. Four stroke now, you pull up to the top, just yeah. let her idle. No, I know. As a mechanic, too, I felt a little less useful, because really I'm only there to blip the throttle. Four strokes, I'm not there to do anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, so there we go. MC wins. Uh, it's a tour de force performance by him. And some fan Minneapolis fans have a banner blocking the people behind him. Uh, welcome back, MC. Welcome back, don't you know? <laughs> Eric, Benny, Seth. All those guys. Norton, Norton. they're all happy. <laughs> um, Michael Rocco. Uh, full privateer this year, by the way. Was he? I just did a podcast with him. Uh, bot bikes, everything. Like full '99 mm. was a full privateer year. So, does he smile at all in this interview? No, but look at the Pirelli hat. God, he's really running them. Tires were really flying off the shelf. I'm sure after this. I'm sure they were. Place performance. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just gonna go out there and uh, do 800 laps at the same pace. <laughs> uh, you know, I know that I'm working hard and MC's working just as hard as me. <laughs> out, of the, out of the river. You know, uh, put in. Uh, Hundreds of miles on the road bike this week, and uh, <laughs> Jeremy just choppered in from. Uh, I can still smell the Goldschlager <laughs> on him. <laughs> I smell copper tone and Goldschlager, and uh, it's really bothering me. Uh, oh, Big Bird! Another Big Bird was a character too. Oh, Big Bird, he, he was this guy. Don't so, leave your chicks though. Don't leave no, your don't no. leave your chicks. You never attended. Never. Never. Big Bird is one of the all-time cocksmiths of the sport. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, swordsman. Quite the swordsman. Are we going to get in trouble for this? I don't know. Like with between the MC and the cocksmith? He thing? needed a – he definitely needed a slayer on the back of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, good guy. Great guy. Funny as hell. He don't was. leave your chick I, around. I love that guy. I wish he was <laughs> still in the sport. He's just stuck in a tree stand somewhere. Didn't want to do a podcast hunting. with me. Really? Yeah. Told me, he said, Mathis, I don't want to, well, are you going to bring up like all the chicks and stuff? And I said, no. I guess I am right now. But, and he goes, well, I, I just want to talk about your career, Larry. And he was like, well, you know. Uh, so. He was interesting. He, yeah. yeah, he just didn't, um, didn't care. From Snohomish, Washington. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Snohomish. Uh, now, as a, as a 125 guy, would you watch these dudes and be like, one day I'm going to be there, but yet you never were? <laughs> I really was. And you know what? Here's what's funny about, like, we laugh about LaRocco and Big Bird never moving out. Uh -huh. I kept thinking, okay, I just need to win a title. Uh -huh. Any day now, these guys are going to retire. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a spot open where Big Bird is, a spot where LaRocco is. Like, I, yeah. And I, honestly, I think LaRocco outlasted me. He kept racing after I quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, good I do grief. admire, though, that you admit you took a dive to stay in 25 class because there's a lot of guys who didn't admit that. And no, I totally Brock did. Sellers got a flu one time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, it, it was tough. Like you said, you didn't want to jump up into uh, a crappy ride. And these guys were all... Well, just, they, at this yeah. point, look at what was available in the 250 class. Yeah. Moto Triple X. Neo, thank you. At the time, it was just, you know... Yeah. Right. Kenny Watson. Well, <laughs> you, you tell me what it is, but... Well, I was only... What was Chaparral was just getting started, but that's McGrath and Button. You're not going right. to, like, pop into one of those spots. Right. What else was there? Yeah. Your no, the no-lean thing actually even went away at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, we were... You didn't want to go over there at this Th point. There was just... There was nothing to move up to. There was no stepping stone team like yeah. there is now. Right, like, now right. you could get on, you know, Petroli. five five or six different right, teams. Right. That would be good. JGR, yeah, you really, Canada, you Suzuki. You would be a full privateer. Yeah. Like, and you... Full. How, how do you do that? Yeah, right. How do you do that and be competitive? Well, there's MC making his move Even fast. if you could afford it, how do you do it? So yeah. the only way back then was to win a 125 championship, and then you had a shot at moving up. You know? And even guys that did, look at Ramsey, how long it took him. Yeah. He yeah. won a title, still had to do like Well, then he had to go years. back down. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get rides. So 
Uh, all right. Well, this has been the Pulp MX Classic Commentary. Thank you, David Pingree, for the uh, great stories that had nothing to do with the race, but were entertaining. Well, you know, nevertheless, we should be the uh, broadcast team for Supercross these <laughs> yeah. days. Yeah, I'm sure Feld would have no problem. Everyone would hate us, but uh, all the riders, but it would be entertaining. Well, thanks for doing it, man.